Before we get started, I want to say uh, just a brief, uh, just a few words, uh, just a brief statement about what's been happening in Charlottesville, Virginia uh, over the past 24 hours. I know that most of you are aware, you've probably seen lots of images and heard lots of stories. And uh, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to briefly address this as your pastor. So I'm not coming as anything other than uh, someone who is trying to be a good spiritual leader. Uh, first, I want to encourage all of you to please be praying for Charlottesville and indeed to be praying for our country. We want to pray that hate and violence and division would fail and that God's love, reconciliation, and peace would prevail. We pray that those whose hearts are filled with hatred um, would receive God's grace and be transformed so that they can turn away from evil and choose good. Second, I want to say as clearly as I can that, um, that according to Christianity, white supremacy, anti-Semitism, and racism in all of its forms is an evil. It says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 9, the one who claims to be in the light while hating a brother or sister remains in darkness. Hatred and racism are antithetical to the life and the teachings of the Middle Eastern Jewish rabbi that we follow as Lord and Savior. They are driven by the principalities and powers of this world that promote hatred and other values that are diametrically opposed to the kingdom of God that Jesus lived and died for. A kingdom that is characterized by love, justice, equality, unity, and peace. This is the kingdom that all Christians are called to serve and if necessary, even die for. So as Jesus followers, it is our sacred duty to publicly name and condemn racism to choose the side of the victims, and to passionately fight with them for equality and justice. However, as we do this, it is very important for us not to return evil for evil. If we retaliate against hatred with violence, we stoop to the level of the perpetrators. We lose the moral high ground, we undercut our cause, and we stray from the nonviolent way of Jesus. As hard as it is for us to hear, Jesus tells us that we must love our enemies, pray for those who persecute us, and to overcome evil, not with evil, but with good. And so we name the evil, we specifically condemn the evil, we protest and we fight against the evil, but we do so in accordance with the law of love. Through nonviolent protest, transformative education through the legislative process and the way that we exercise our vote. And so as your pastor, I want you to know that I'm not only praying for those in Charlottesville, I'm not only praying for those around the world where these issues are flaring up, but I'm also praying for you. I'm praying that God will help you to find the courage, the strength, and the hope to fulfill your Christian duty, your sacred Christian duty, to stand against racism, hatred, and violence wherever you find it around the world.